All right, welcome back to The Garage, early episodes of the Row Enfield series. I talked about how I didn't like the suspension, particularly the front suspension, and that I commented that I felt like it was soggy, and it really just crumbles on the slightest bump in the road, and uh, to the point where I, I felt it's kind of unsafe. And so then I, you know, if you follow social media for Roy Enfield, you'll find out that there's a few companies that make alternative upgrades for the shocks, and one of those is YSS. And uh, so I ordered, I ordered an upgrade kit from YSS, and they're based in Thailand here. So I ordered from Thailand uh, off of eBay. It took about it, t it took a couple weeks, but uh, the seller told me up front that it was gonna it was wasn't gonna be very fast shipping. But I didn't have to pay any duty, so that that was nice. It came right through. So I'm going to install that kit this morning, but I'm going to do it a little different. If you watched any videos on other riders upgrading their bikes and even the directions of you know from YSS will tell you to remove the, the forks from the bike to do this and so I'm thinking like that's a lot of that's a lot of extra work to remove the forks again in earlier episodes of my series I spent a lot of time uh, upgrading the uh, turn signals, the other things, fly screen, and it, to me it's just a real uh, unnecessary labor to remove your front wheel and everything to do this. Now I could be wrong, but I'm going to try to do it and I'm going to use a vacuum pump to remove the, the oil in the shocks. And I've got the bike where where I can still compress the forks um, as the directions indicate. So the, the first thing I did was uh, raise the front of the bike uh, using my floor jack and I used a piece of plywood here underneath my rock guard. I raised the front off about one or two inches. The way my bike's sitting now, I can't use my hydraulic lifter, this one here, without a lot of help. Somebody helping me, you know, slide it under there while I, we try to pick it up. But this works out. I carefully removed the, the handlebars and just slid them out of the way here. So this will give me access to the tops of the forks and again this is why I didn't really want to remove everything you got to remove your headlight your turn signals my USB connector front fender all that this is my mighty vac and this is what I used on the episodes on the excavator series to change the oil in the excavator and you can get Two, four, six, eight, you know, 10, 10 liters of fluid in this container. I still have some oil in there from that oil change. But this is the method that I'm going to use to extract the oil from the forks. This Mighty Vac comes with several different size hoses that are used depending on what you're going to be doing and what, what kind of access you have. Here's some of the extra hoses that it comes with. But the game plan is to I remove the caps of the forks here to suck the oil out this way and to see how much I can get out. Yeah, so we'll see if this if this hose is gonna make it past the the damper that's down here in the bottom of the fork. And another reason 
why I'm not too concerned if I leave a little bit of oil in there is because the bike's brand new. So it's not like there's several thousand miles on this particular bike. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna try to get it all. And even, even besides getting it all, I'm going to try to come up with something where I can use some blue towels to wipe the excess uh, oil out of there as well. I'm going to use a 22 millimeter six point socket to remove the caps. try to, to position this so you can see where the uh, fluid level is and I'm also going to measure this before I extract any fluid out. I'm going to use a simple uh, welding rod to mark the distance between the top of the fork and the fluid. So this is it. This is where the rod just meets the surface of the oil and then I made my mark here and I think I'd like to measure how much oil I take out but since I've got oil in my mighty vac already I'm probably going to bypass that I don't really want to clean the, the mighty vac out right now so I'm just gonna suck as much oil as I can and just guesstimate I'm going to remove the OEM spacer tube. Now I'll use a magnet to pull the spring up. First, there's a, a washer that sets on top of the spring. So I've hooked up my air supply to the Mighty Vac. Now I'm going to feed the hose into the fork. See how far down I get. And it's just a matter of turning your air on. And then we should see our fork oil being sucked out. And here it comes. So when it when you when you hear it start to suck air, you just need to move your your hose around a little bit to see if you can find any gaps where your hose will go deeper 
the same way if you're doing a, a car engine or something like that. You want to find any recesses like that where you still might have some fluid. Just for curiosity's sake, I removed the the hose and marked it, and this is how far it went, just about to the axle. So it must have, it didn't curl up, so it must have gone past the damping rod. So I took off the cap from the other fork leg, and again, with the shocks extended fully, I checked um, with the welding rod that I used to measure the other side, the air gap, and it was it was right on. The left fork was the same as the right fork, 185 millimeters of air gap to the top of the fork. Got the forks bottomed out, and if, if you heard that the suction, it found new oil when I did that. So let's see if I can uh, move the forks back and forth. Holding up my front tire with some material here. Keep it bottomed out. That way I can manipulate the hose and get any remaining oil out. Getting a lot more oil from the first fork, the right fork that we did. Residual oil. Probably don't need to do this, but why not? Pick up a little bit of debris, a little bit of oil on the walls with the tubes. All right, so at this point, I think we're ready to measure our oil. Get ready to measure out my fork oil. So I'll have a clean graduated cup here. I just have cc's, but milliliters and cc's are the same. So the manual, for the 2023 Interceptor 650 tells me 473 millimeters per fork. So I have 400 and 450 and 500. So I think I'm gonna just have to interpolate. I'll start off with 400 liters in each leg. I want to uh, cycle the, the piston up and down on each leg several times to make sure that all the air is out and that the fluid has made it everywhere it needs to go. 
and then I'm going to check the air gap. My air gap was 185 millimeters. And uh, it sounds like a lot based on what I've seen other riders coming up with. But that, that's what it was, 185 millimeters from the top of the fork to the surface of the oil. So I'm going to start off here measuring 400 milliliters of oil and I chose this brand. This is Motul fork oil. This is heavy. <clears throat> I think the stock oil is, is too weight and uh, a lot of riders that do the upgrade kit I think are doing anywhere between 5 and 15 weight but I chose this I, I, based on my riding style and the, the road conditions here I, I wanted something heavy and uh, so this is going to be it. These higher viscosity oils hold air longer than a uh, lower viscosity oil, so you can see how the air will take a longer time to be expelled from the oil. I'm going to slowly move the forks, make sure the oil is properly dispersed everywhere it needs to be. I think the YSS says at least 20 times to fully compressed and extended. I'm going to give it a chance to settle and I'm going to check my air gap again with the force compressed. So before we started I measured the air gap with a welding rod and I marked it Here's the mark right here. Okay, let's see what we got. So just touching the surface. It's right on there. And even though the, because the, we're not straight up and down here, I am measuring at the same place on the the rearward side of the tube. Just touch the surface and the mark's right on. So what does that really tell me? Does it tell me there was only 400 cc's, milliliters of oil from the factory? I'm doing the measure, it's the same way. There's no internal parts. I took the OEM internal parts out before I I did the air gap and I'm checking the, the new air gap the same thing without any replacement parts in there so why does the manual say 473 milliliters that's why it would have been nice to measure how much came out but not set up to do that right now I may be doing this wrong so comment if I am if I'm checking the air gap wrong Maybe the air gap is supposed to be checked with your parts in. Well, we could do that, but regardless, uh, there's an equal amount of oil in each leg. Okay, we're ready to 
drop our springs in. And one thing you sh you should know if this is your first time doing it, the the instructions that I have from YSS don't mention this, but I saw on uh, YouTube the rider named Richard Fillingham, and he did a an install of the of this kit as well. Did an uh, excellent video, but he uh, he mentioned that the top of these springs will have the serial number or part number, whatever it is, and there is a top and bottom to the spring. But the first things that we're going to do is drop the new valves in and with the spring facing up and they'll submerge, submerging and sinking. So now we're ready for our springs. Spring with the writing side facing up to drop our spring in. Same thing on the other side. And then the next item is the, the is flat washer, which is a uh, surface for the actual top cap and these just get dropped in just make sure that they land flat and drop them in they did one thing I did notice is uh, there's a lot of debris in the packing box uh, I don't know if you could see that but it looks it looks like there's a it's that styrofoam from the packing box so I'm just gonna run a blue towel through here clean that up and I'll drop these in drop the next one in and then finally are the your top cap with the dampening adjustment on it and I unscrewed these all the way out to make them easier to install. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and button this back up, take it off the jack, and I'm curious what the suspension is gonna feel like, you know, with just that 400 milliliters in each, in each uh, leg. noticeable stiffness. All right, I think just need to do a lot of riding and tune it tune it in 
it is a lot stiffer. There's less sag when, when I first sit on it. And I think it's gonna do the trick, but who knows till we take a ride. I'll probably do a, a follow on episode to this video. All right, so that's it. Problem found, problem solved. See you next time.